In this video, I'd like to talk about the Canadian Electrical Code, Section 26. Section 26 has to do with the installation of electrical equipment. However, a lot of it is pretty straightforward. The transformer section, a little bit less, less straightforward. The transformer section of Section 26 of the Electrical Code, um, it's sort of in the middle, in the middle of Section 26, and it has to do with the sizing of the overcurrent protection devices in a transformer. So, what we're talking about are the um, the the uh, the fuses or the circuit breakers that go before the primary side of a transformer. So. It's a little bit less uh, straightforward than other sections of the Canadian Electrical Code, so I thought that it, it would be prudent to have um, to explain this a little bit. The reason that we have this um, <clears throat> this part of of Section Twenty Six is is so that we can disconnect transformers. So if we look at Rule Twenty Six Two Forty Eight, it is disconnecting means for transformers, and basically we have to be able to disconnect a transformer so that it can be isolated um, from the grid. We have to be able to isolate it from the grid in such a manner that um, it is isolated from the supply without disconnecting all the other loads from that same supply. So what we are essentially doing is we're saying, okay, well, what is the question mark here that allows us to disconnect this transformer that has primary windings here? And of course, the transformer relates to its secondary windings that are here. So uh, what this is about is this um, primary overcurrent protection. So this primary overcurrent protection I can write here. <clears throat> primary overcurrent protection. In some cases, it's a fuse. Some cases, it's a circuit breaker. Um, and that is going to be dealt with by rule 26-250 uh, if it is high voltage, 750 volt, um, uh, and and not dry, and it's going to be um, section uh, two fifty two, or rule two fifty two, and rule two fifty four would be dry, and two fifty two is um, is under seven hundred and fifty volts, but still oil cooled. So we're talking about what is that primary, and of course that depends on. Um, on your primary current. It depends on your current here, I primary, and it depends on your current here, I secondary. Primary. Now, if you're not understanding transformers in general and you don't know what I've drawn here, comment below. I can make you a video about it. This is basically showing two windings, primary windings and secondary windings. They are connected by a core. And inside that core, we give the primary windings some AC current in order to induce magnetic flux, magnetism inside the core, which will then, by Faraday's law, connect to the other side um, to induce a current in the secondary winding. And actually, I do already have some videos about that. So if you need to um, review what's going on here, then, um, then by all means, check out the videos in the magnetic circuits um, playlist. But it deals with, hey, how big do we have to size this depending on what is this and what is this? All right, so um, why is that important? It is important because we have to be able to disconnect. This is the why it is important and this you really, you should know. Why is it difficult is right here. And I would say it is a little bit complicated um, and it's complicated because the inrush current. Now, knowing magnetism and knowing how uh, magnetism works, you will understand that there is a large inrush current of a transformer because you have to magnetize. You have to establish this magnetic flux in here. This magnetic flux doesn't happen all on purpose. Oh, I mean, all um, instantaneously when you put in that AC signal, I. This doesn't just, it, this doesn't automatic, automatically give you your flux. Um, 
it takes a while for that flux to develop. And so it takes a lot of inrush current to um, convince this material to get magnetized. And that's all to do with hysteresis. Uh, of uh, magnetic flux, which I also have videos on. If you want to know why a transformer has a large inrush current, but from practical means, as as um, as a person taking your electrical exam, is that you uh, need to know um, what is this overcurrent device, so that I can let this inrush current happen because it's going to happen. And I'm not going to nuisance trip this overcurrent device, and I'm not going to be, um, you know, tripping it all the time. I let this inrush current happen, but I can also protect this circuit like an overcurrent protection device should do. So this is a fine line here, and that's why the upcoming sections, uh, Rule 26, 250, 252, and 254, are a little bit complicated. Um. So it's it's important to size those productive devices so that they react quickly to overload or short circuit conditions, but not to nuisance trip during the inrush current. That's what I need you to know. That's what you need to know about section 26 um, as it pertains to transformers. So in my next video, I'm going to try to make this complicated situation of figuring out what this um this primary protection device will be. I'm going to try to summarize it into how you do the calculations. So these sizes of the transformer equipment, really it has to do with your calculation of the primary windings, the secondary windings, um, and, and then we can go into calculating the actual sizing. And then we also have a section 256 that's sizing for everything. So that'll be in my next video. Um, because I don't think it's really that easy to figure out from the Canadian Electrical Code. And I'm hoping that this table is going to help you as sort of a cheat sheet to go through the example problems in preparation for ever being tested on this material.